This is try number three. Let's try again. This is Judy. I am here with another junk journal. And I had a lot of issues with this one because there's something, whether it's a wax or something on the cover, that I could not get anything to stick to this cover. I finally think I have it on, even though it's trying to really lift off the paper itself, off of this, but we'll see. This book is from 1953. This one, same book, same book, is from 1958. So, um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, uh, these are c cardboard pages, not the thick, that you read to like a, a toddler, but they are cardboard, not paper. So I wanted to do that just to be different. And yeah, so you can see where nothing wants to stick. This book uh, belonged to somebody named Jennifer Brown in the day. And I had a lot of fun doing it, but things just, you know, things I've forgotten how to do. I should have made my... Uh, binding further apart but it's okay I was trying to keep some of the little stuff sewn in together so I did a whole lot of um, funny animals and realistic animals and my cricket was my friend because I was able to go on creative fabrica and get a lot of different papers and characters and things like that this I did with a die long time ago, and I've just been saving it for something. And I pulled it out the other day and said, okay, let's use that. Be happy. So I made a lot of tags. This one actually came with the, one of the digital paper packs. And then, oh, and this was somebody named Jennifer Brown's book. I did not erase that. I think it adds a lot of character. You know, it adds, you know, this book has history, you know, and that's what we want, right? History. So, anyway, so here is what I had to do is take to keep the book in order. And the, the, the binding on the book was already off and all exposed and damaged. So, I had to... Go ahead and cut the pages apart so I could keep them in order. And so all I did was put them on a, um, a hinge. I just hinged them. So here's our baby rabbit. And this is a uh, pocket. It's a beautiful day on the farm. That also came in the digital paper. And I put went back and put grass where I could because I kept thinking it looks so stark. I love the barn. Love, love, love the barn. And then we have the farmer and his duck. Isn't that just cute? And I left lots of space for journaling and pictures and drawings, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do on this, which this is probably not going to go past my house. Uh, but if somebody really wanted it, guinea pigs, I never knew there was guinea pigs on farms. I didn't know it was a thing, but in this book it is, so I got a picture of a guinea pig. There's a pig pig. There's some music paper. There's our ducklings. Oops. And this was the paper that I got all a, most, a, a good portion of the animals out of. And this was the name of it, if you want to look it up on Creative Fabrica. Um, and I decided to go ahead and print. This was just a cover page. So I went ahead and printed it out and put it in the book because I thought it was cute. Whoops, I'm trying to keep this because my desk is a mess. So see, baby guinea pigs on a farm. Who knew? Have you ever seen a guinea pig's tail? <laughs> and then, of course, baby donkeys. 
So we have a donkey and some hay bales. And again, I made these. I'd never done this before, but I went on my Cricut and I made a rectangle. And then I put my barn on top of it and then I flattened it so it would be a print and cut. I was pretty proud of myself. I did that several times with several of the graphics. I was pretty proud of myself. I wanted to print it on uh, uh, designer paper, decorative paper, but Cricut wouldn't see the, uh, the per perimeters, so I couldn't. But anyway, here's some more of that paper and this is a um, tea stain uh, library card that I have did a long long time ago I have a whole stack of my died tea died and this is a sheep he's realistic looking here's the farm here's another pocket and I did use the rickrack um, I just like them on the ends. I just think they add a little something something. So I put it on there. This is another pocket. Here's our cows. There's the cow paper. Isn't that adorable? And here's another one of those tags I made. Our little farmer. Oops, I forgot to part, pop out part of his. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's our farmer. He's watching over all the animals, getting ready to plant. He's got a shovel, so he must be digging a hole. And these are old um, wax bags that I bought at a paper store years ago. Uh, school paper, there's our donkey eating some hay, and there's our donkey in the book, our baby ducklings. This is an envelope. You can add something, glue it on there as a uh, uh, tip in. And then we have our hen house. And I left it open so they can put something back here or just say, what does that say? Hen house. Oh, cute. Anyway, and I put some flower washi down here instead of grass. I thought it would be cute. So that's that one. And again, that's another tip in. And then here's my horse and my cow eating their hay. And here's a goat and a squirrel that's looking after the goat saying, is he gonna come get my acorn? The, the squirrel really should have been much smaller, but you couldn't see him. So I went ahead and kept him big. This is where I'm going to put some sort of a charm, but I cannot find any charms with farm animals. So I left that on there. When I do find them, I will add it. Look at him, isn't he cute? Here's our piglets. So here's our piglet. Look at them. Digging in the mud, digging in the mud. Here's the baby calf. And here's a cow. He's adorable. And then here's some more cow, a realistic looking cow ish, a rooster, and the cow just getting along. And here's our puppies with our puppy and our kittens and our rabbit bunny. Okay, that's signature too. I didn't tell you, I don't think. I made three signatures in this one. So here's our donkey and another sheep. Look at the faces. <laughs> I couldn't resist. They're so thick and cute. So more tea stained paper and the puppies chewing the, the guy, the farmer's shoe. I'm sure he's thrilled. Here's our uh, geese and uh, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that, but probably I have. I just don't know. But anyway, here's a goose and a geese. No, a duck and a goose. <laughs> oh, here's the farmer's uh, tractor. And these are our baby horses. Look at that horse. 
this was actually made for sublimation. That's why it looks a little weird here. Because if you don't use sublimation ink, which I don't own. Uh, here's another horse. He was pretty. And my Cricut did a really good job getting up into all the little hair things. And isn't that just adorable? And here, oops, what happened here? Oh, okay. Here's another strange looking pony. Here's our hay bales. Isn't that just adorable? I think I missed one. I made the farmer, the hay bales. I'm taping. And uh, here's another envelope pocket to put stuff in. Oh, here it is. Here's the tractor. Isn't that cute? So, hopefully one of the kids or something would think this was cute and want to put into it. But And then we have some goats with their hay bales. And that's the end of the book. But like I said, I have put this on several times and it just doesn't stay. I put corners on it because they were pretty beat up. So this way I can at least preserve that. Um, so I'm happy that I got it done. I'm just not happy about how nothing will stick to it. And like I said, I put on so many different types of double-sided tape and uh, uh, I used Nuvo glue. I used uh, Barely Art glue. And now it's just lifting off the whole, you can see where it's lifting off the paper. So I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see. But, you know, I'm sure it was going to go in somebody's trash if, if I hadn't bought it for a dollar or whatever, 50 cents. I don't remember, but. But I do have another one I can do, but what I'm thinking of doing is either Rudolph, and Rudolph was uh, Jesse McKean's book in 1970, and this was a 1958 copyright, okay? Or I might do Little Red Riding Hood. She's a little harder to find um, clip art for. So we'll see. But, I mean, there's other things I can put in. You know, the squirrels, the bird, grandma, that type of thing. This is from, oh, nope, it's 1992. So that's not, that's not that long ago, 30 years. And I also thought about doing the night before Christmas. And as you can see, this has been a little beat up. Um, not horrible, but the corners will have to be cornered because that's completely off. And But we'll see. This one is from 1949. So, oh no, I'm sorry, 1969. I always get that messed up. And this was the 21st printing of that in 1969. But I love the, the graphics and the colors in this one. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I like the newer version, too, because those colors are really bright. But, I don't know. I kind of just like the way this is decorated. And uh, some of the paper feels a little odd. You know, like almost textured, but it's not. It's probably just the ink on it. But anyway, so we'll see. But this is what I have to decide. I'm going to keep making these until I get one, you know, 100% correct. <laughs> Which I don't know. It's a junk journal. Are they ever 100% correct? I don't know. But like I said last time, I did watch... Um, silver and sprinkles to see how she she saves this but there is no saving it when it's already been ripped off 
Um, and, you know, as pretty as it is, that does not, you know, that does not uh, make me say yes or no to it. But anyway, like I said, I had watched her and she showed how to keep the book in order so it's in readable order, which is important to me because I don't want to be reading the story to one of the grandkids and then I'm off onto another page. How are they supposed to understand what's happening? So anyway, so that's what I have for you today. I've also been very busy making cards and trying to use up some of my, hang on, trying to use up some of my card kits. Um, because I want to clean this uh, buffet off behind me. Now, <laughs> today at church, this lady's birthday was this week, so they always give out the cards that I make for birthdays. And I had given them, when I came back this spring, I gave them 300 cards that I had made through the winter. So when she opened it up, she said, did you make this? Because I never put my name on them. And I said, yes, I did. <laughs> so these ones are just card kits. You know, like I, I just put them together however I see that I want to do that. So um, I've got these started and I got another bucket almost full. So I'm working on it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. But I have fun doing them. But like I said, these kits, I don't... I don't always make from kits. I like to make just from what I have. But uh, sometimes you got to use up those kits because they're so pretty. You know, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six Stampin' Up! kits behind me. Ouch. So I need to get them done this week. But we'll be going to Indiana and possibly... To Atlanta uh, after Indiana this week. Indiana for a tractor show and Atlanta to move my mother-in-law into an assisted living because uh, she's just falling too much and she's getting hurt. So anyway, I appreciate you guys coming to check out and see what I've been up to and I hope you're all doing well and that you have creativity um, time that you can just sit and reflect on uh, life and the Lord and everything else that you can reflect on when you're crafting. That's what I do. I just reflect on a lot. So I appreciate you guys coming. God bless and remember to be kind to one another. Bye-bye.